So here I am, a Saturday morning on call. Um, I'm in the interventional room and uh, I've got a patient who's about seven days post renal transplant and they've got primary graft non-function. Sometimes we don't really find a cause for this, but in this circumstance, we found a really tight stenosis on CT angiography at the origin of the transplant artery, right at the anastomosis. Um, it's approximately 98 to 99%, I would say. Um, it, nevertheless, the graft still seems to be perfused. So what I'm gonna to do today is try and get across this stenosis without causing uh, any more mishap and without completely occluding the artery and uh, place a balloon expanding stent across this to try and improve the graft function. So over the next few minutes, I'll just talk you through the process and, and what I'm doing. So the first thing we'll do is look at the CT angiogram, which was done earlier in the day. You can see on the coronal slice here, as we go back through the external iliac artery, the extremely tight stenosis just adjacent to these surgical clips. This is likely a fold in the artery. Let's look at the axial images or axial oblique. And again, you can see that stenosis is confirmed and the artery is probably kinked here. And yet more peripherally, the kidney still seems relatively well perfused. The Doppler flow looks quite good, but when you look at the waveform, there's a very slow upstroke indicating a significant proximal stenosis. So we did a left femoral puncture, same side as the graft. This is a Vanti II catheter and contrast angiography again confirms that that tight stenosis is present and again it looks like a fold. I've got an angle teruma wire here. I'm just trying to winkle this through this tight stenosis. I'm trying different angles of the Vanti II. I've given up there. I've now put in a destination sheath which is six French and it's a renal double curve. So this is going to give me a useful angle facing towards that transplant artery. I'm just pulling it back down into the artery and trying to turn it laterally along with the Vanti II catheter. And we've just got it directed into the artery there. And I'm gonna very gently probe again with this hydrophilic wire. First, I'm just putting a little bit of contrast in just to confirm my position and check the angles. I'm now probing with the wire. I'm trying different angles, turning the wire with the torque device. And as you can see, not really making any progress there. It's important to try more anteriorly and more posteriorly as well, because it's not always coming off directly laterally where you think it is. And I do have the tube obliqued here as well along the line of the artery. And I was just about to give up and try an 018 wire, which would have been my next device to try, when you'll see that we managed to get through the stenosis and down into the main renal artery. So I'm just going to place my wire more distally in one of the more inferior branches to give some support and try and push my catheter through. My catheter went through relatively easily. I'm just going to take it around the corner there and then we're going to change for an 018 wire. And geography through the sheath here just confirms my position through there um, and it shows I haven't completely dissected the artery in the process. So this is an 018 wire, this is an SV5 which will give me quite a lot of support uh, for angioplasty and also to place a balloon expanded stent. So I'm now going to take the catheter out. I'm going to do a four millimeter angioplasty. This is not the size of the vessel, but this is just a pre-dilate, particularly if this could be quite um, a tight stenosis, but not surprisingly so soon post-surgery, this was relatively soft and the balloon dilated there with no wasting. And if you look at angiography here, it does actually look better immediately post-plasty. I've now got a seven millimeter by 12 millimeter Trumo Tsunami stent, which is balloon expandable. I would ideally have liked an eight millimeter one, but we didn't have any on the shelf, but seven should be sufficient. And what I'm going to do is actually slightly over expand this. So now I've confirmed my position again, I'm going to keep slightly forward pressure on this stent as I slowly inflate the balloon. I'm gonna take this up to 14 atmospheres and this will dilate it over seven millimeters, perhaps to about seven and a half millimeters, which is almost ideal for this size of transplant renal artery. Very little wasting there at all. The wasting you could see was just due to the stent expanding. Now we're going to very carefully remove the balloon. It's caught very slightly on the stent, but didn't displace it, not surprisingly. Taking the balloon out, and then we're going to form a completion angiogram, and you can see it looks significantly better than it did before. All the peripheral vessels are perfused. We're getting much more perfusion of the cortex. 
take the wire out and we're going to use a closure device. Now if you look on Doppler afterwards, just visually it looks better and look at the waveform there's a very straight upstroke to that systolic waveform now which is what you'd expect to see that was the previous and it was quite damped so this overall technically has been a successful procedure time will tell as to whether the kidney can recover from the ischemic insult this late post-transplantation